Welcome back to another video. I just got back from Rainy Lake fishing with Donnie O'Bert and we were doing a bunch of stuff but one of the days we went out and chased crappies and that's where we're going to take you on a little bit of a crappie adventure in this video. Donnie's going to share some tips that will help you catch more crappies and first things first he's going to talk a little bit about the spot we were fishing. So mid-February here we're talking locations. Uh, today Nick and I decided to try this pinch point in between in between well not a giant but well, I tell you what <laughs> it's a nice 10 11 inch slab we'll take those all day long uh, locational strategies we're in a pinch point between big mud flats to the south of us and springtime crappie spawning grounds a couple miles behind me so uh, I expect these fish to start to start transitioning and moving uh, as we get into later February and March. They're gonna keep pushing back to those uh, those springtime spawning grounds. So good spot to intercept them is a, a real narrow pinch point in their travel path. Now Donnie chases a bunch of different species of fish through the ice and in particular he guides for some really big pike and there's just something about Donnie he just like can't keep the pike away from him. Uh, so here's some more fish catching action from the pike master himself. It seems it's like, a pickle. what in the world? What are you doing in here? All right, tip of the day, I can catch a pike anywhere, no matter what. Good grief. Boy, if it was that much work to get a pike to come eat it, we might be in trouble. <laughs> Holy moly. Or, by sore mouth and him, did we just open up Pandora's box? Time will tell. The best part about Donnie is that he's a real authentic dude and on this particular day the bite was not particularly great. We had to work really really hard to catch the fish that we did end up catching. It was a lot of moving, a lot of drilling, a lot of being patient and in this next segment Donnie's going to drop a little bit of real talk. I'm going to share something with you about, uh, about the outdoor industry that a lot of maybe a lot of casual onlookers don't understand. Uh, if you only see the outdoors through social media and YouTube, uh, you're seeing the hero shots. You're seeing the hugs and the high fives and the hook sets. A lot of times what you don't see are the hundreds and hundreds of miles and hours upon hours of, of no fish, of backcountry exploration. Um, we've been out today trying to trying to film a little crappie bite and uh, I'll be honest with you it's been tough it, it's been a head scratcher so we have fished and, and drilled and fished and drilled and we've come up with with uh, two nice fish so uh, you know if, if you're beginning to get into fishing and, and you're going out and struggling and, and having a tough time uh, stick with it like there are tough days tough days are part of the sport so don't toss in the towel just because you're not getting the hero shots for this crappie bite spoons were really the ticket just because we were doing so much running and gunning moving around trying to drop down to fish before they swam off so efficiency was key um, and Donnie specifically he was using an eighth ounce bro bug spoon uh, with a little bit of bait on the bottom and that just ended up being the ticket because it was more efficient um, and so now Donnie is going to reel in another nice crappie and he's going to talk a little bit about why he likes spoons. So one of the benefits I found spoon fishing for crappies is you can grab that one right now. Oh my goodness. Oh. You can oftentimes grab the more aggressive fish uh, out of any school. Let's see that in um, the sun. There are uh, there are times where tungsten's going to produce, and there are times to flat out get aggressive for them. Uh, I didn't even hardly get this spoon down to this fish, and he was coming. So uh, that's a fun, fun fish. That's that's nine inches exactly. So, I mean, that's like 14. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good slab. We'll take that. A nice thick chunker. We're gonna send that one home because we're not taking any home today. But uh, definitely a, a beautiful, beautiful specimen. Next, we have some more crappie catching action from Donnie, and I think you guys are gonna end up really liking uh, the entirety of this clip. He's thinking about it. Here it comes. 
There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, that is uh, a little bit smaller than the last one, but boy, I tell you what, I'll take those all day long. Just a just a aggressive little feller. Saw him on the live scope there, dropped down to him, and uh, he come right up, no hesitation, just smoked it. So I ain't even put, ain't even put the last one back yet. So you, oh, there's a cramp. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh man, there ain't a hammy. Whew. <laughs> oh. So this wasn't a particularly easy bite. It wasn't like we went to a basin and the fish were just stacked up there. We are basically chasing little pods of either one or two crappies that were swimming around. Sometimes they'd be 30 feet over there, 40 feet over there. And uh, it was a lot of work to track them down. And Donnie's going to talk a little bit about our system um, for kind of being efficient and actually catching these fish despite the fact that there just weren't a ton of them there. Okay, so we are hunting these down one at a time today. Uh, these fish, it's, it's uh, early February, they're not really schooled up, so uh, what we're doing is one guy's running the live scope, or forward facing sonar, whichever brand you prefer, and uh, calling out the coordinates basically 35 feet, you know, this direction, one guy goes and drills, and another guy will drop right down with a flasher and a bait and try to get on top of these fish. We're, we're picking these apart one at a time. So uh, if it's, it's winter and I'm sweating, so we're working for them, but uh, nine, that's probably 11 inch, you know, that's a, that's a nice crappie. Now Donnie's gonna break down how he looks at and how he targets crappies throughout the season, uh, when he's fishing for them and when he's not. So I fish them right, pretty much right up until ice up. Uh, I've got five or six different mud flats I really like. I, uh, I got some, some vertical trees I'll fish, uh, some brush piles, and they can all hold on any given day, any one of those, any one of those features can hold, hold lots and lots of crappies. So um, then I pretty much leave them alone until March. I spend most of my winter um, chasing walleyes and doing some tip-up fishing for pike. Uh, March I usually spit, split between pike on tip-ups and crappie fishing. So this was an early, early trip today. Uh, I've never been up here this early before. So kind of typical what I'm finding for February is ones and twos. Um, over time what I found is that when you get into March, if you actually have March weather, uh, these fish will really start to group up into big, big pods of fish. And boy, if you can find them then, it's, it's go time. Uh, if you can find them in, in when they're all stacked up together on these mud flats before they make their transition, uh, that can be a lot of fun. And then I leave them alone basically until next fall. I fish them in March and, and then uh, I'll, I'll go after them a little bit in July and August. Uh, I pretty much leave them alone during the spawn and that's not, that's not for any particular reason other than I'm usually walleye fishing. So uh, I will, oh, that's a big fish up high. That thing's way up high. Bob Seeger would say way up firm and high. See that bugger up there? Yeah, about seven feet away. <laughs> yeah, way, way up there. Injured bait fish over here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Kind of looks like he's coming this way. He looks like he might almost be six feet away now. Yeah, I would say six feet is pretty accurate. He's, he's closing. But he's, now he's at about He's five rapidly, and a half. rapidly closing the distance. Yeah. This fish is going to eat. He's at least gonna take a look at it, it looks like. Four and a half feet away. I cannot believe how high up in the water column this fish is.
trying to stay just a little bit above them there and quiver it. I don't wanna, obviously, I don't want to move it too fast because he, it took him about four minutes to close five feet. I think he is interested, though. Oops, he got him, yep. <laughs> I just saw that tip just go like that. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Let's see what was way up there. Well, just like that, slow movers. Yeah, oh my gosh, that fish took forever to get to me, but you know, they are, they are definitely uh, I would say negative today neutral to negative um, But that's a dandy. We'll we'll take that any day of the week uh, Well, you guys uh, I'm sure Nick was recording that whole time you kind of got to see the whole The whole process there. I marked that fish 15 18 feet off the bottom uh, Came up got up in front of that fish and uh, <laughs> just slowly but surely worked its way to me and ate you know, so uh, these fish are negative today. It's it's we've really struggled to get them, but that's a pretty good fish there That's I use my handy nine inch measurement That's a good fish. That's, that's 12 probably I feel like that last clip was just a really good representation of just the mood of the fish We didn't necessarily have a camera right on the screen there for you to see it But as you can see with the countdown timer in the corner it took a really long time for that fish to mosey on over and then eventually you know, close the gap and, and take a bite. But uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. Special thanks to Donnie for uh, taking some time and making some content with us. And if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have a lot more awesome content coming in the future. And until then, we will see you in the next one.